know how long this is going to take? Hang, hang tight, hang tight. We just got to get this thing recording. I'm a foreign national being held unlawfully. You have no jurisdiction. Look, look, okay, you were right. Legally speaking, we had no right to enter Mexican airspace, no right to confiscate exotic materials, and no right to detain you. This is a black site. Yes, ma'am. United States. It could be Canada. Climate's wrong, and your accents. Smart. <laughs> well, Miss Nissenbaum. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major Isabel Abigail Nissenbaum. Numerous commendations, though no mention of total confirmed kills, which I'm guessing is rather high. It is. But then there's this last note. Current status, absent without leave. Now, why would someone with an impressive service record decide to go AWOL? I was taken. Taken? Abducted. Mm-hmm. That little buggy you landed proves as much. Sergeant Major, I believe you've had contact with an aggressive alien civilization, one whose culture is deeply saturated in the ritual hunting of other intelligent species? Like in Guatemala. Well, we're aware of the Valverde incident. I'm surprised you are. Where it gets around. Word of alien manhunters wiping out special ops in the jungle gets around? Unlikely. I'm guessing you're a wet work type. Assassins tend to have unsavory friends with classified intel. I wouldn't know. Sergeant uh, Isabel, look, look, we already have the ship. The only thing I want from you is your story. After that, we'll fly you home, first class, hot towels, and the whole shebang. Why should I trust you? Because we're trying to stop them. And by the look of the inventory in that ship, so were you. Alien jawbones, thermal netting, predator armor, <coughs> and a bolt-action sniper rifle. Ballistic says it's been fired a lot. All right, Sergeant Major. Cards on the table. We are a task force directed by the United States government to assess and respond to a very real alien threat. One that attacked first and continues to do so with impunity. How many have been on Earth? That's classified. More than one? Five? Ten? A hundred? Too many. You don't know. Well, I know you've killed one. Likely more. I know you commandeered an alien spacecraft and successfully piloted it back to Earth. <laughs> I'd like to know more. I'm also one of a select few on this planet who will believe you. We... Uh, I promise... I will do everything I can to take what you tell me and use it against these monsters. Fine, go ahead. Where were you when you were abducted? I was on a mission. And what were you doing in the moments before your abduction? Hiding. Care to elaborate? No. <sighs> okay, describe being abducted. During the course of the mission, I slept. When I woke up, I was falling, like in a nightmare. You fell asleep, and then you were falling. It was a parachute insertion, like a halo jump. By the time I realized what was happening, the chute opened on its own. I thought I'd wake up, but I didn't. It was real. From that elevation, could you recognize anything? No. There was only jungle. Sergeant Major Nissenbaum, in your estimation, during the time of your abduction, do you believe you were on Earth? No, I do not. Sergeant Major, a terrestrial weapon was found inside the alien spacecraft. Um, Bolt-action sniper rifle. Was this rifle assigned to you? It was, by my request. Was your rifle slung on your person when you fell asleep? No, but I was holding it. What did you do after landing? I did a supply check of my person and began to recon the area. I was disoriented. I worked under the assumption that I was on Earth, but somewhere I'd never been. It soon became obvious that this was not the case. 
And how did you arrive at that conclusion? The combination of flora was wrong. Too many species together that shouldn't have been. Others that I couldn't identify at all. Were you alone during this time? At first. There were others. Not long after landing, I spotted an American mercenary, a Mexican cartel enforcer, and I spat a special forces soldier debriefing each other. I believe we were deployed to the planet at the same time. Over the course of several hours, we found two American serial killers, a Yakuza enforcer, and a member of a Sierra Leone RUF death squad. It didn't take long to see what we had in common. Killing? Yes. Yeah. Given the situation, we agreed to work together to find a way out of the jungle. After a short time, it became clear we were being pursued. Hunted. Can you expand on that? There were traps. Hunting animals used to flush us out. No shelters or signs of civilization. We concluded that the planet was a kind of preserve. We'd been brought there as prey. The whole planet was a game preserve. As far as we could tell, yeah. Of the eight of you, how many survived? Myself and the American mercenary. You get his name? Royce. Tell me about Royce. What do you want to know? He got a last name? I never asked. Why do you think you and Royce were the only survivors? Killing doesn't keep you alive. We infiltrate, complete the mission, and get out. We were trained to survive, not to butcher civilians. You two sound chummy. How did you earn his trust so quickly? I didn't at first. It was very difficult to earn his trust. He worked with us because it was tactically advantageous. He saw us as disposable. And how do you know that? When we were trying to identify the enemy, he used us as bait to lure them out. Someone died. And why would you want the trust of a man like that? Look at the list I gave you. Do you see a lot of trustworthy men? I knew he was my best shot at getting out alive. And I was right. How did Royce help you get off the planet? We killed the aliens that were hunting us, but we were injured. We grew close while we hid to recuperate. I think we would have left together if they hadn't marked him. Marked him? How? He killed the hunters, survived for so long. They must thought he was worthy. So they gave him armor. Predator armor? Yeah, but tailored for a human. He'd often spoken about how we secretly enjoy hunting men, that it was dishonest to think otherwise. When they gave him that armor, it was like the gods telling him he was right all along. That's when I lost him. Where's Royce now? He used the armor's cloak to find a landing site. He took me to it, and there was some kind of dropship and a smaller skiff. I thought we'd both take the skiff, but he said he wanted to meet them, face to face. I argued with him, pleaded, but there was no point. Whatever connection he had to humanity, to me, died in the jungle. His ship disappeared into the clouds, and I was alone. I want you to know I appreciate your cooperation here today. We're going to be chewing on your testimony for months. Sure. But now to the part that, frankly, I am really excited to hear about. How did you pilot an alien spacecraft back to Earth? Uh... And just to be clear, there are like nine engineers with their ears pressed against that door. So, you know, be specific. Before he left, Royce unlocked and readied both ships using the computer on his armor. I don't know if he could have done more, or if he just didn't care to. But he responded to me as though I were one of the hunters. 
everything was in their language. Well, how did you decipher their system? We're trained in naval navigation, so some things made sense out of practicality. Others I figured out through trial and error. Time was difficult to judge there, but I slept several times as I worked it out. It's funny how simple it must be for them. So many controls had images and holograms. I don't think the hunters are very smart. What do you mean? We saw so many of them. Big ones, man-sized ones, but all hunters. There were no mechanics or techs. No one ever performed maintenance. If something broke, they abandoned it. I think it all works for them, but they don't know how it works. Would you fuck off? That's been a running theory of ours. Please uh, continue. I found a planetary directory and just spent hours going through it until I found Earth. I grabbed my supplies and started pushing buttons in the directory until the ship rumbled and then I sat down and prayed. I don't know how long I was on the ship. Long enough to go through my food, but not long enough to starve to death. It was quiet. I spent my time sleeping, soundly for the first time, I don't know how long. I woke up once and there was Earth, huge and blue. The ship wanted a landing zone, but I couldn't read the locations, so I chose at random. Sounds like you got lucky. I guess. Well, that about covers it. I just want to say, you've been through a horrible ordeal, but the OWLF thanks you for your assistance. Good. If you want to be of any more help, there are interested parties who are impressed with how you handled yourself. People who could use your unique skills to continue the fight. I'm ready to go home. I'm not interested in working for America. They're not strictly American. Let's say they're an international response team. Here's my card. That number there is my personal cell number, should you change your mind. I'll think about it. Goodbye, Agent Keys.